Hey guys, it's Matt. This is Paul's Bathtub Rebel series. I've shown you this first cartoon before. There's two others coming. If you're at work, try to take a quick glance at uh, the next two cartoons over the next 45 seconds. Then I don't think you'll need to see anything if you're at work. I'm going to talk about how people get trapped at first, second, third grade truth, what the system is designed to do with its graduated animal farms to trap people like Norm here. His name is Norm in the bathtub throwing rubber duckies at me to trap them. Why most truthers never get out of, say, fifth grade. And to remind ourselves that we're not holier than thou. We carry maybe less bias than Norm firing rubber duckies, but we still carry it. And can we use this sort of exercise to see where we continuously are getting tripped up? And of course, the last part of this is we have been played used and manipulated over the years as much as norm here and how do we bring that to an end even groups at our level are still played used and manipulated am i being used and manipulated right now to propagate the magenta i don't even know how to say it properly anymore the magenta magenda you know what i mean that's all got to be on the table here Right. First, let me walk you through each of the three cartoons one last time, especially if you're at work, if you're a dog walker in New York City. Don't look at the cartoons anymore. Don't let the old ladies poodles jump out in front of a bus. You don't want that problem today. Don't look at the, I'll walk you through each. The first one I've shown you a few months back. And again, one last time. Thank you so much, Paul. These are great. And we'll zoom in on the details uh, of some of these later. The details are off the charts, like below me on the television screen there, and I'm wearing the Peter Stuyvesant t-shirt, and Zara's there, Rubio's Bubbles. He's got Rubio's Bubbles. The, the details off the charts. So here, Matt, you stupid conspiracy son of a beach. <laughs> Which part of reality? And I'm saying all of it. Which, he's not satisfied. He's just not at our level. Which part is fake? What do you mean all of it? See, it, they just can't get it. You will never qu quite get it as long as you're in the bog. And most of these people, like Norm, the Normie, they're addicted to the bog. Now, Norm is a very low-level truther. Um, he would probably still call himself a conservative. He sees something is not right in the world. He still likes complaining about the government. He still believes that if the right people organize, that the Hillary Clintons and the Anthony Weeders can be taken off to jail, and the rotten system that created its rotten self can some way transform itself. He's not quite, you know, at least at least I appreciate where the anarcho-capitalists are coming from. I think most of them, you know, at, at sixth or seventh or eighth grade are missing a lot. But, you know, again, most people we come across, our brethren in this community, are in the bog. And Norm certainly is. In the second cartoon, we find Norm on a completely different day because this is the video where I'm presenting, uh, per my t-shirt in initials, the Worldwide International Consortium Against Lawn Signs, which was, boy, six months back, a funny video I made about the people that put those lawn signs up and they don't do anything to practice what the lawn sign says. And all they're really doing is putting a lawn sign up like hate does not live here in this house. And you just want to run up and knock on the door and say, why would hate live here? And why does a lawn sign change anything? See, if you didn't have hate, that's wonderful. But what does the sign do? And is somebody supposed to drive by the sign that it's just full of hate, see the sign, and it's just all supposed to run off them like an oil leak under an old tractor? The sign I hate the most, I didn't even mention in the old video, in front of a nursing home or assisted care facility, or maybe even some medical facilities or hospitals. But heroes, <laughs> heroes work here. You just want to run up again, knock on the door and say, how is it that heroes work here? There are people that work in the medical profession, never thought they'd be around sick people. So they were, it, most people would expect them to just abandon the entire five wings of geriatrics and let them fend for themselves and not come to work because fear that they could get something where there's like a 99.5% they're so going to fully recover because they didn't just abandon their responsibilities and leave the geriatrics to call out for pizza every day for five months in a row because they just didn't walk out. Then they're heroes. What? And when the geriatrics would go to call out for pizza, the damn pizza guy would get there and say, you can't come in. You can't come in with that. They would have starved. Okay. 
they didn't abandon the responsibilities. That's wonderful, but they're not heroes. Okay, give me a break. Sorry. To the cartoon top left, his wife is Janice. He's Norm. Janice, that Ukraine sign on the lawn, take it out. We look stupid. You look stupid. <laughs> First off, Norm, he's watching my video, and I'm cutting up the people that put the lawn signs. He shouldn't be so influenced by me after one video. It doesn't even, if he believes in his Ukraine lawn sign, then stick with it. So, you look stupid. He says, Matt, you stupid... Can he, I think in every one he calls me a stupid conspiracy son of a bitch. Um, his, his wife from beyond the door, what? How do I look stupid? It's your sign, Norm. And who's Matt? Now, this bathroom is probably larger than the apartment my cousin and I rented together in San Francisco, 99 through the year 2002. He's got the walk-in shower separate from the bathtub. The mirror's cracked. I think Paul would say, you know, he, get, he flies off into a rage from time to time. He does throw the rubber duckies at me, but he probably has smashed the mirror at one point as a frustrated truther, perhaps when Obama got his second term <laughs> and defeated Romney. There should be a little lamp or light on either side of the mirror, but the one on our left has been, looks like it's been ripped off and it lays limp <laughs> on the <clears throat> sink, but next to the sink there on the, um, the sink counter top. What do you call that damn thing? A vanity. They call them vanities here in the United States. I mean, what the hell's that all about? So it looks like, I guess Paul would, would agree, he could tell me if I'm getting this wrong, but he, in his rage, he's ripped off? Or maybe he fired something and it hit the lamp or bounced back. It, it took the lamp off. That's dangerous. It, it looks like live electric wires there. What if he touched it when he was wet? He's got the generic freedom or conservative poster up or something framed. The hat of Uncle Sam before it was Mandela affected. I don't know. I wonder if I'll ask Paul if he just did that. The, um, of course, very quickly, the uh, Uncle Sam's hat that is portrayed by, say, Apollo Creed in, a, in Rocky IV and all over media with the red and white stripes and the blue around the bottom, that has no historical origin. That never appeared on any historical representation of Uncle Sam. So to many, it is a Mandela effect. And who the heck is calling me? Finally, on the right there, uh, it's a heated towel rack. It looks like prison bars. Is this one of these retro causalities that flow through artists when the artist didn't intend it? It looks like prison bars. I know Paul said it's a heated towel rack. To me, it looks like the turnstile at Alcatraz is somebody would try to leave the metal shop or something. And who needs 18 levels of heated towels? But anyway, you know, some people do have these things. Um, but it's just interesting how it does look like. A pri I don't. I, I'll ask Paul. If it, is it? It's supposed to be a uh, representation of a man whose mind's in prison. Maybe. Here's the third one. And what's really cool is each one is a different vantage point or camera angle of the bathroom, and it's quite impressive. It really is. So I guess he's finishing up. He's got a nice TV hanging over that tub. Finishing up one of my videos, and I'm saying, biggest question is, does it distract you? Thanks for listening. And he says off to the right, what do you mean, Matt? <laughs> How am I distracted? How is all not real? My expensive bathroom is real and paid for with real money. Matt, you stupid conspiracy son of a beach. Are you talking to the TV again, Norm? Janice says just above the Rubio's bubble bath. What does it say? I got to lean in here. Rubio's, <laughs> Rubio's bath bubbles. It's probably like when you take the family to the Hard Rock Cafe and they have all that horse shit for sale and all those trinkets like t-shirts for $40 and bottle openers for $90 and you want a trinket to remember your experience and your horrible overcooked burger at the Hard Rock Cafe. If you go to Marco Rubio's Bubble Parties of Central and South Florida, they probably have that same horse shit you can buy at the door on your way out. To get a little bit more serious, the guy's angry as... We all were, as we still carry a bit of anger. Many of us do. We carry too much, but we were probably very angry back in the day. That's when the graduated animal farms come forth and, oh, we're going to take this group to jail and this group's going to pay for, for what, they, what they did. And then you, you forget and you abandon understanding yourself and just go out, have your attention and energy go out to try to take the criminal's or to bring the criminals to justice. I mean, it, it knows uh, the, quote, what they call human being extremely well, and it knows how to play everybody 
at every level. We're getting much better. I would say 90%. We have 10% we have to work on where we make sure we're not serving it or playing its game. But the lower level truthers, they're almost 100% playing its game. And those that fly the Trump flags off the pickup trucks, 100% its game. Probably about a year and a half ago, we lost our final Trump is going to come and save the world person that somehow participates at this channel because you just can't be in both realities. I mean, there were people lingering here, I'm telling you, even up until a year and a half ago, that in some way were believing in Trump or were actually QAnon-type people. Uh, really? Oh, boy. I, th- I don't I think they're all gone by now. They've got to be all gone. But I don't want to, you know, be too harsh on that group because at least they have the basic tenets, whatever that word means in this context, that the liberals and the, re- re- the readers of The Economist magazine and The Atlantic magazine don't have. The first grade truther or somebody that follows Glenn Beck, for example, is still far more sane than the, somebody that would sit down and actually look forward to a Rachel Maddow at night or a, or a Lawrence O'Donnell, one of my favorite <laughs> my favorite people, Lawrence O'Donnell. He hangs upside down to sleep. They're far better because at least they see that something is not right, that some sort of behemoth government should not be wasting so much and spending so much. At least they see the problem. The Democrats and the liberals and incredibly the college professors and the Hollywood liberals and, you know, all these different segments and groups in society that are considered to be, considered per their diplomas, to be the smartest among us. They simply take it up the you-know-what and then they go out and vote for more of it. From the asshole dark's perspective, the dark part of reality's perspective, it has nothing to worry about If anybody is watching even 10 minutes of MSNBC per day or is reading any bit of the New York Times, they have, they are simply going to lay down and do whatever the not milk system wants. Now, is it shaking in its boots (laughs) for conservatives? And no, of course not. But it knows that that is a path that if one can get out of the bog can lead to some real truth. It does. That's why all this conservative talk radio exists and very little liberal talk radio. That whole doesn't, that side doesn't exist because it has to send out its army of graduated animal farms and farmers to keep people that sense that there's something wrong with the world and there's something wrong with the way governments are run to keep them pacified. Okay, not satisfied, pacified. That's why Rush Limbaugh, whatever he made, $150 million a year the last few years or something like that, whatever he made, he was $1 billion underpaid because it was a tremendous way to keep people that someday at least have a chance of getting out of the bog, probably not, but they're on the right yellow brick road. Of course, 99 point whatever percent will never get off of it, but they're on the path that at least leads in the right direction. So, I mean, Rush Limbaugh, I don't want to get into a whole gigantic graduated animal farm presentation like that whole book chapter, but it's that they, the army of the graduated animal farmers is sent out to appease and to satisfy groups that graduate to each level. And each level is promised a little bit more truth, which hopefully is enough truth to keep that person from seeking the next level farm. We all went through the farms. It's just the slight, tiny few of us came out of the farms. I went through it. I watched the Glenn Beck show on Fox. Who was it? 2007, 2008, 2009 or something like that, even 10. I watched that show for years. I was fascinated by it. The whole underbelly that I didn't know existed, where he would talk about the connections. And there was a lot of truth there. Of course, it's a farm. He's meant to keep everyone there. It's, it's look at all the things that George Soros is into and all the connections. 
and all the way money is moved around and all the things that the Rothschilds are involved in and all that stuff that, of course, is out to spin our wheels. It was fascinating. You know, you watch CNN, you don't know that side exists, but of course, it's still a farm. And then I went over to, what's the next level after that? Alex Jones. At at least three years, I watched almost every single noon broadcast of Alex Jones. And there was a tremendous amount of truth there. And they'll give all that away as long as you don't keep progressing. And about 5% of the people listening to this can't help it, but want to scream out the next logical question. People that have been here a long time don't need to hear this from me, but I will address it. What's the next logical question? Well, Matt, doesn't that mean you could be the next progression of farm? Uh, Well, it could be, and I guess it's okay to be thinking that. We should always have our skeptic hat on very tight, especially in this day and age. I don't have all the answers, but whatever I seem to understand about how reality works, I got to completely on my own. See, the farmers, they work for the same system that provides resources to Nancy Pelosi, that plays both sides of the Republican versus Democrat. It's all the same system. It's one creepy table here that pretty much runs everything. The army of conservatives and graduated animal farmers all serve and work for that. I've never worked for that. I've been fooled by that. I've spent time maybe at the wrong channels for too many years. We all have gone in and out of the bog. But there's still people in this community that believe that some, like I am uh, some rich (laughs) multimillionaire and Matt just puts on the sweatshirt and looks all bedraggled and he presents his presentation and then he puts on the Armani Armani suit and (laughs) flies off to Hollywood. That's ridiculous. Okay, but there's still people and the the trolls, they just drum that up. I've, I've been here in my house for 20 years. I've never hid my identity or my face. Well, Matt, they could have put you in there 20 years ago to be, oh, sure. Yeah, they planted me here 20 years ago. And if, have, you, has you, have I ever gone away and taken a vacation? <laughs> no? Okay, Matt, you don't need to apologize. If you're getting close to certain truths, and it goes and flies in the face of all these animal farms and everything that the system or the not duck wants to push, of course, there's going to be troll activity regarding what I'm putting out. And the rest of the truth community that's even trying to be legitimate doesn't like me either because I'm saying when it boils down to like two sentences, it kind of puts all their horseshit out of business too. Nobody likes me. So only one real question remains. And if anybody's saying it, I congratulate you. I say it myself. Why does your channel still exist, Matt? The fact that it exists must mean that you are far, far away from the truth and not as close as you or others may believe you are. I I, I believe we're close. I really do. I don't believe we'll ever have the answers in this avatar body, limited, limited information we take into the senses. But I, the path is, okay, is it the only path out? Of course not, but it is a true path out, okay? Worry about yourself. Stop giving it energy and attention. It's all pretty basic stuff. I don't know why I'm still allowed. <laughs> I don't know. You know, there are rules. I've always thought there are rules in this matrix, and... As long as those rules, it can't break certain rules. You can't break certain rules. I can't break certain rules. I don't know, all right? But the the confidence isn't terribly high that I'll be here forever. This is why things like freevoice.io exist and things like that. The strikes have come. I don't know why I'm still here, but it does not necessarily mean, well, that must mean you're really far away from the truth. Not necessarily contractually, there could be something. If somebody's actually getting close or on the right path or could be a a year or two or three or five away, but if somebody's kind of going down the right path, you know, maybe they can't be snuffed out in terms of censorship. I don't know the contractual rules these creeps have to play by, but I do believe these rules exist. The major thing that we have to guard against is like a superiority complex or an arrogance versus those around us, even using the term NPC, very degrading. You know, we have to be very careful, you know, oh, because we have an idea of how things work. First off, you know, we we still have work to do, even if it is just a few sentences, if we truly want a full understanding. And that work mostly comes in working on ourselves, 
dropping the fear and the anger and the bias and the superiority complex over your friend Tony or your family. And, you know, we can do that. And it is does come to the degree of arrogance that they're lesser uh, beings. And I've talked about um, young souls or even in the case of Melvin P., I guess we're allowed to be like this, a lesser spiritual incarnation of Melvin P., whatever bias you want to present against that creature, I think is warranted. I'm talking about the, your kind of people around you, like loved ones that deserve our respect. And there are maybe r- fundamental reality reasons, like the metaphysical level we've talked about, not that we're, we're always right and they're always wrong. Maybe the two realities at the outer ring actually exist at the same time. We always have to be humble. But again, I'm talking about your friends, your family, your mailman who likes to complain about Biden and, you know, we just keep our mouths shut. You know, these people deserve a respect. I'm not talking about anybody that engages with the system, even like as low level as like the Lionel Nation. What's the, thank goodness I haven't heard from the Lionel Nation for four or five years. He was huge on QAnon, came out and said, we're just weeks away from being granted freedom. Q- QAnon's going to deliver freedom. And, I'll, you know, look, it's lower level. That's not Rush Limbaugh, but it's somebody that is engaged with the animal farms, that is engaged with, in some way, with the system itself. All right? I don't think we have to be the same way. Uh, with with somebody that chooses a side and chooses the side of propagating the system's propaganda by playing one side or the other, putting everybody into camps. Uh, I don't think we should go out of our way <laughs> to tr- to trash them, but they don't they don't deserve our, our respect. Somebody the level of the Lionel Nation or these what is there hundreds of conservative talk hosts, and most of them don't know how things really work. They don't. They actually believe in their camp and their side. Some of them have a little information or kind of understand that their job is more about the propaganda. I got it. But don't, you don't think a guy like Lionel Nation really understands how the guts of this reality work. Come on. We know way more than someone like that. So, you know, hey, you want to keep making fun of those people? I'm saying they're on the table. Now, the people at the higher rungs, I mean, you flirt with the word Evil, of course. You know, Melvin P., Santa Claus Schwab, Dr. F., uh, George Soros. I mean, of course, no matter what they know and what they don't know, it's basically not real far off the definition of evil. I mean, this is the class that's literally trying to keep you away from your spiritual self. You can call them demons, absolutely, if, whether you're Christian or not. It's very similar to what a demon would do. I mean, this is our enemy. But in this realm, this is their soccer field. This is their playing field. This is their baseball diamond. You don't take them on directly at their own game. You see what they want from you, and at the very minimum, you starve them of that. Okay, all we have is worry about our self-philosophy, and when somebody around us has the inclination that they're open-minded enough to consider other things, then certain people, maybe one person a decade, we can really help out. But that is rare. People do come forth and tell me the stories of the people they woke up, and, you know, hey, I, I, I'm i glad you're telling me those stories. I personally don't have those stories, but I don't interact with too many people. And the damn checkout counter now at the Target is self-checkout. I can't even talk to those people anymore. Thanks for listening.